Hey guys, I'm going to talk about voice coils and I'm going to do this in a two-part video where the first part I'm going to cover the basics and talk about a dual voice coil subwoofer and how to wire it up in series verse parallel to match your amplifier. Part two is going to be a little bit more advanced where I'm going to talk about the structure of the voice coil and help you understand the features that are advertised by the manufacturer. Now these parts aren't in succession, so feel free to bounce back between the advanced and the basic to learn a little bit more. Now we have here a couple dual voice coil subwoofers and one of the first things you'll notice is the two sets of terminals on either side of the woofer and these are inputs, terminals, to go to the connections of the voice coils themselves. Now I've heard things saying that you cannot hook up just one because it will throw the woofer off balance and power only one side, which doesn't make sense. Here we have a voice coil and it's a dual voice coil. We have lead on each side and the coils themselves are wrapped around each other. So geometry uh, tells us that they're gonna move uh, the same because they're not on either side, just the leads on, are on each side. So let's look at wiring on these dual voice coil woofers. And we have here a mono amplifier that is rated to put out its most amount of power at one ohm. And here we have a subwoofer and is rated to have dual two ohm voice coils. So we hear people tell us that you can run a dual two ohm voice coil in parallel to make it one ohm to match the amp. So exactly how do we do that? Well, first let's hook up a meter, an ohm meter, and see what it actually reads. Now, of course, we're bouncing around a little bit, and the percentage is always off a little bit because of tolerances in the terminals and in your meter itself. So if we're, we're pretty close, 2.3, and obviously I'm talking and there's noise here, so the cone movement is going to change the reading as well. So now we have two two ohm voice coils that we can wire in parallel. Now I look at the amplifier and it's supposed to be a mono amplifier but I see two sets of speaker terminals. Well what's this all about? Well they're actually connected internally where this is the same terminal. So this gives me some flexibility when I want to wire up my dual voice coil subwoofer. And I'll show you this but you can actually wire up each voice coil to each individual set of positive and negative or run them off of one wire and loop them at the voice coils themselves. Now we flip our woofer around and we see the terminals are marked black and red for polarity and we want to make sure that our wiring is marked as well and it is from factory but we can't see this on camera so I marked it with a red marker and parallel wiring is uh, pretty easy to understand it's positive to positive neg negative to negative all the way down the line so all the voice coils are parallel to each other. Now one of the rules is that with parallel wiring your impedance, your resistance drops every time and there's a formula to figure out exactly what this number will be but basically when you have uh, two voice coils of the same impedance both of these are two ohms it's going to be half so our final impedance is going to be one ohm. Now one rule of thumb if you're doing multiple woofers is to just think that the final impedance is always going to be lower than your lowest voice coil. So this wire here is going to go to our amplifier. And we have the positive from the amp and the negative from the amp to the positive and negative of the voice coil. And one way to wire this up is to use a jumper cable that will go from this voice coil to the other. And just like I said, all the positives go together and all the negatives will go together. So we just feed it right into the terminal together with that. And we just take it to the other side here. And we connect it exactly the same. So here we have our woofer voice coils wired together and our wire going to the amplifier and we can check it with the meter just to make sure and this should be 
give or take a few percent right around one ohm and surely enough it is we're sitting uh, between one and one, one and a half there so then we just plug the wire into the terminals of the amplifier we have positive and negative marked and remember what I said before about all these being the same internally it's marked positive negative negative positive so it doesn't matter which positive or negative I can change them and do uh, uh, either positive or either negative but basically we have voice coils while wired in parallel for a one ohm load to our mono amplifier for the most amount of power out of this amp now let's take a look at this other woofer and talk about series wiring on this woofer we have dual 4 ohm voice coils and there we go right in the range of 4 ohms on each voice coil so let's take that off and now when we wire in series one thing to remember is that your final ohm load is always going to be higher because all the voice coils are added together and this goes right down the line and basically the voice coils are in a series on, in the series of circuit and current will flow through one coil then the other then the other and what we can do is our wire coming from the amplifier again we have marked and the positive if we if we think of positive and negative as input and output we have the positive coming out of the amplifier and into the first voice coil and then we imagine that current will go in and flow through that voice coil and then come out of the negative and we want it to go over to the next voice coil so we use a jumper wire and we could use anything as long as it's the same uh, gauge as the speaker wire we're using so we can use just one little piece here or we can use the same jumper wire we did before but we only have to use one wire or twist them together to have one piece here so then we go out of the negative and into the positive on the other voice coil and remember that it's going to come out of that voice coil and back into the amplifier there's our amplifier wire there so the wire coming from the amplifier, you'll go to positive of one coil and negative of the other coil, and then just loop the remaining terminals. And like I said, this adds the final impedance. So if we have our meter again here, we can read it, and we should have about 8 ohms. As long as the magnet doesn't affect it and sure enough there we go about 8.3 8.4 now what this is useful for is not matching for the best the most power out of our amplifier but for adding lots of speakers or subwoofers to the same channel without it being too low